Hello Snow, this is KT45. I'm sorry if I'm going to be talking too fast, but I had a lot to say in a little bit of time. I wanted to address something that you continue to keep saying. First, I'd like to say that your video, I like your videos and I like to see a Muslim with a sense of humor. I think that if most people could learn to take a joke and tell jokes, then they wouldn't take themselves so seriously and there'd probably be a lot less conflicts. Um, I want to address something. I continue to see you make comments like this, saying that atheism is illogical. Now, you continue to bring up something called atheistic evolution. This is your attempt to tie in evolution with a biogenesis and then with the Big Bang and say that something can't come from nothing. Before we get into this, I want to ask you a question. Do you know what evolution is? Well, just in case you don't, let's see how the scientific community defines it. Douglas J. Fudema, I'm sorry if I can't pronounce his name right, and he wrote a book called Evolutionary Biology, states, in the most, in the broadest sense, evolution is merely change and is so all pervasive. Galaxies, languages, political systems all evolve. Bi biological evolution is in the properties of populations of organisms that transcend a lifetime of a single individual. The ontology, ontology of an individual is not considered evolution. Individual organisms do not evolve. The change in populations that are considered evolutionary are those that are inheritable via genetic material from one generation to the next. Biological evolution may be slight or substantial. It embraces everything from slight changes in proportion of different alleles within a population, such as those determining blood types, to successive alterations that lead from the earliest proto-organism to snails, bees, giraffes, and dandelions. I know I've said that pretty fast, but basically it's the transition of, or the variation between different species. So, you might say that these are new definitions and that they are just scientists changing evolution to prove their point. Well, let's look at how Darwin defined it. By the theory of natural selection, all living species have been connected with the parent species of each genus by differences not greater than we see between the varieties of the same species and at present day. And these parent species, now generally extinct, have in their turn been similarly connected with more agent species, and so on backwards, always converging to a common ancestor of great class, so that the number of intermediate and transitional links between all living and extinct species must have been inconceivably great. But surely, if this theory is true, such have lived on Earth. So, as you see, when speaking of evolution, you must be talking about already living an already living organism. Then you must be showing how they transition between them. A biogenesis is not transition between species. So Snow, you haven't debunked evolution. And Snow, this is what you really need to disprove. You need to disprove evolution. Because if evolution is true and there is a transition between species, then the Quran is incorrect. According to the Quran, and this is um, the 38th book, um, verses 71 through 76 and when your Lord said to the angels truly I will create a man from clay so when I have completed him and breathed into him my spirit then fall down prostrate and prostrate to him then and and the angels prostrated one and all save for Satan who was too proud and disbelieved he said to him oh Satan what prevented you from prostrating and what I have created with my two hands. Are you arrogant or too exalted? He said, I am better than he. You created me from fire and created him from clay. Basically what I'm saying is that no matter if you believe that a God guided evolution or that evolution occurs from a natural process, it still disproves Islam. Snow, you stated that the atheistic version of evolution is impossible. Then my friend, you should become a deist. If you believe God must be a part of evolution or that God guided it, then that is what you should believe, Snow. Because, Snow, you haven't debunked evolution, or as you would like to call it, theistic evolution. You said that you would debunk evolution, but you still haven't. You said you would make a video about this. So, if you can, please do this as soon as possible. Now, continually, you go back and talk about something coming from nothing. You say that atheism is illogical because we supposedly believe something comes from nothing. First, I'd like to say that all, all atheists believe that the universe comes from nothing. You really need to research the other theories out there. But there are some atheists who do say something comes from nothing. Are they illogical? Are they not scientific? Well, let's see if the idea of something coming from nothing can be shown scientifically. The first law of thermodynamics is equivalent to the principle of conservation of energy. The total, the total energy of a closed system is constant. Any energy change must be compensated by corresponding inflow and outflow of the system. 
Einstein showed that mass and energy are equivalent by E equals mc squared. So if the universe started from nothing, energy of conservation would seem to have been violated by the creation of matter. Some energy from the outside is apparently required. However, our best estimate today is that the total energy of the universe is zero within small zero point energy that results from quantum fluctuations with the positive energy of matter balanced by negative potential energy of gravity. Since the total energy is zero, no energy was needed to produce the universe and the first law was not violated. Note also that one cannot ask, much less answer, what happened before the Big Bang? Since no time earlier than the Planck time can be logically defined, the whole notion of time before the Big Bang is meaningless. Okay, if that is, if that's not enough for you, if you don't think that Okay, I've just shown that with thermodynamics, it's okay for a universe to basically come from nothing. If that's not enough for you and you want a scientific experiment showing that it is indeed possible, then I want to introduce you to the Kashmir effect. The simplest form of the Kashmir effect was predicted in 1948 by H.B.G. Kashmir and consists of an attraction between a pair of neutral parallel conducting plates placed in a vacuum. This okay, so basically it's in a vacuum, nothing's there, and they're already neutral. What happened to make them neutral is that they got the two plates, they touched them together, and then they separated them apart. Once after they did this, then it was a um, there's no attraction between them, and there's and since they're in a vacuum, there's no other particles and no existing particles in between them. So you would think that nothing would happen. But basically what happened, a force was produced. This attractive force has a purely quantum origin and cannot be obtained using classical description of electrical magnetic field since it is a direct consequence of the existence of zero point fluctuation. What is happening is a turmoil of virtual particles that come in and out of existence that can violate the energy, momentum, conservation of a system for very short periods of time as described by the Heisenberg's um, uncertainty principle. The, un the fluctuating virtual particles exert a radiational pressure on the plates, which on average is greater outside the plates than in between them. Now, with this, you can see that it is possible for basically particles to come in and out of existence. And this agrees very strongly with how quantum physics is, so I think you should go dwell into quantum physics a little bit more. Remember to know that we are dealing with, you know, when you're dealing with things like the Big Bang and singularities, we're talking about physics at a quantum level. This is where normal physics breaks down. So the ideas of cause and effects don't seem to apply to a thing on a, I mean, no, they don't seem to apply on a quantum level. But this could be wrong, so we can continue to study and continue to observe and find answers to these questions. But it does show that the universe coming from nothing is indeed probable. Now, I personally don't like this idea, but I need to, of course, study it more. Just because I can't wrap my head around it doesn't mean it isn't possible. Personally, I like to believe that ma matter and energy have always existed within a singularity. This singularity then went through an expansion, which is what we call the Big Bang. In my view, the Big Bang didn't create matter and energy. Quite the opposite happened, and the basic components of matter and energy, which cannot be created or destroyed, started the Big Bang. So. No, no. Currently, I as an atheist don't believe that the universe came from nothing, but instead came from the basic components of matter, which are eternal and do not need a creator. You might ask, where did this matter and energy come from? I would tell you that they have always existed. You might say, well, energy isn't eternal. It breaks down. I would say that energy doesn't break down, but instead turns into different forms of energy or matter because, as I've said before, energy cannot be created or destroyed. But once again, we are dealing with singularities, which we do not know much about except that they occur within black holes, as well as occur within the Big Bang. So if I am honestly and scientifically minded, I must be able to entertain the idea of the universe coming from nothing since our understanding of quantum mechanics is now limited. Now Snow, this is what I want you to do. I know you said you were going to refute evolution. If you want a specific thing to refute Snow, in a scientific manner, please refute how retroviruses basically add so much evidence for evolution. Can you please refute that? This would help me so much because it provides an astounding amount of evidence for evolution. So much that it's hard to actually debunk. So by you debunking that, that would help me out a lot. 
Well, anyway, I know that you think we atheists are illogical, but I hope I've presented my material in a scientific and rational manner. All right, I'll talk to you later, and have a good day. All right, thanks. Bye.